How can the equation 3 parentheses 12 plus 11 x parentheses be simplified? So now would be a good time to pause the video, give this one a shot, and then we'll go over how to do it. So in this case, what we have to do is distribute the 3. And what I mean by that is we're first going to do 3 times 12, which is 36. And then we're going to do 3 times 11 x. Now, 3 times 11 is 33, and we're just going to bring that x along for the ride here. So the answer is 36 plus 33x, which is answer choice C. So here's a written solution that I typed up. You can look at this if you want to. Maybe pause the video, and then when you're ready, we'll move on to the next question. For which value of x is the expression 16 divided by 3x plus 9 undefined? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? So this would be a good time to have you pause the video, try to figure this question out, and whether you get it right or wrong right now isn't what's most important. It's all about the learning. So let's have you try that now. Okay, so let's talk about this question. Hopefully you had a chance to try it if you wanted to. So these questions oftentimes I think sound a lot more complicated than what they really are. So all you want to do is just take everything in the denominator of the fraction. Denominator is just everything in the lower part of the fraction. So this 3x plus 9. And I'm going to set this equal to 0. And I'm going to solve this equation for x. Now you might be wondering, solve for x, what does that mean? Well, what it means is we want to get x by itself on one side of the equation. So I have 3x plus 9 equals 0. The first move that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 9. Now, why would I subtract 9? Well, it's 3x plus 9, so if I do minus 9, the 9s are going to cancel out. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side. So I'm going to have to subtract 9 from the other side as well. So if I rewrite this, I have 3x equals negative 9. And it's negative 9 because I had to do 0 minus 9. So I have 3x. That's really 3 times x. And the opposite of times is division. So if I divide by 3, what's going to happen is the 3s are going to cancel out. And I'm going to have x by itself on the left-hand side. But... Whatever you do to one side, you always have to do it to the other as well. So I'm going to have to divide negative 9 by 3 as well. Now, if I do this, I'll figure out that x equals negative 3. So d is the right answer here. And the reason that this is correct is if I take this negative 3, and if I plug this into uh, the equation, if I plug this in for x, I'm going to get it as a zero in my denominator. And so the idea here is that you can never divide by zero, all right? And if you take your calculator and if you try any random number, try like 99 divided by zero or whatever you pick, you're going to get an error message. So you can never divide by zero. And all we did was we took this 3x plus 9, we set this equal to zero, uh, we solved it for x, and we saw that when x equals negative 3, that value is going to make the expression undefined, all right? And if that's that's kind of complicated, all right, so don't worry about that. Just know how to solve questions like this. Take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and let me show you the written solution to this on the screen. Which answer choice correctly represents the inequality graph on the number line? And you see it here. So let's have you pause the video, try this one out if you'd like to, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do this. Okay, so let's talk about this question here. So an inequality is basically just a statement saying that two things are not equal. And basically, we see this solid red line right here, and this is showing us which numbers are going to be included in the range here. So any numbers that are outside of this, we can automatically rule that answer choice out. So for example, negative 6 down here is by itself. We see that the, the red line does not include negative 6, so we could just take 8 out. Same with e right here, right? Because e has positive 5, which is way over here, has nothing to do with this red line right here. And the negative 8, too, is way down here, has nothing to do with the range of values uh, right here uh, by the solid red line. So we can take a and we can take e out here. So basically, the next thing to understand is what do these open circles mean? So see how these circles here are open? The open circles tell us that this negative 4 and 1 
are not going to be included in the range of values. All right. If they were closed circles, then negative 4 and 1 would be included, but they're open circles, so they're not included. So we could take D out because D is saying that negative 4 is less than or equal to X. Well, X cannot be equal to negative 4 because negative 4 and 1 for that matter, these values are not included here in the range. Okay. So we're now left with B and C. So C is incorrect here because this is negative four and it also includes negative one. Um, so that's not gonna be correct because it, the values go beyond negative one. We also have zero here too. All right, so B is gonna be correct. So X is some value, it's going to be something, uh, it says here, X is between x is something greater than negative 4 but less than 1. That is how you'd read this. It says x is something greater than negative 4 and x is less than 1, right? So you can kind of think about it as the the number when you kind of look at the less than and greater than sign. Think about it like this is like a mouth and it's pointing towards the bigger number here. All right, so if we have negative 4 right here and we have x right here, we know that x is the greater number here because the mouth is pointing towards our x. But in contrast, now we have uh, this less than 1. So if we look at this, we see x is less than 1. The mouth in this case is pointing to the positive 1. So we know that x is a value that is going to be greater than negative 4 but less than 1. And if it was like this, if it was... If it had this line under here, that would mean that x is something that's less than or equal to 1, or x is something greater than or equal to 4, to negative 4, but that's not the case because the circles here are open, meaning negative 4 and 1 are not included in the values here. All right, so I know this is a little bit tricky, so if you had trouble with this, don't worry. I'm going to put the written solution here. You can pause the video, take all the time that you need to read this. Uh, this is a little bit of a tongue twister just to explain this question here. So if you're confused, don't worry about it. Here's the written solution. Take your time, and then we'll go on to the next question whenever you're ready. This video's champion shoutout goes to Kevin, who just recently passed all four sections of the GED test, each on his first try and in just eight days. So congratulations, Kevin. It's a really remarkable accomplishment. And I also want to give a shout out to SBC Lucky, who just passed science and social studies with really good scores and wants everyone to know, hey guys, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. You can and will pass. Do it for you, even if no one else is proud of you. I am. Okay, so it's time for the Champions Challenge question of the video, and if this is your first video here in this series, the Champions Challenge is, in my opinion, the hardest question in the video, and of course that's my opinion here, so I'm going to give this to you now. It says, answer without a calculator. This, what is the square root of 120? Now, to help you out here, I've given you this list of common square roots here. Uh, and so I'd like you to try to figure this out without a calculator. You can use this common square roots list. This won't be given to you on your test. I'm just giving you this to you right now. Um, and if you get this wrong, don't worry. This is a really hard question, in my opinion, to do without a calculator. So it's just practice. It's just about the knowledge. So let's see how you do. Okay, so to start a question like this, what you'd want to do is you'd want to think of numbers that will multiply together to give you 120. And you want to see if you can find numbers that will also appear on our common square roots list. So if it sounds like that's really complicated, don't worry. Let me show you what I mean here. So if we think of numbers that will multiply to get together to give us 120, one set is 4 and 30. Okay, 4 times 30 will give us 120. Now you might be wondering, well, how could you know that without a calculator? Well, one trick would be think of numbers that will multiply together to give you 12 and then put a zero on the end. So for example, two times six gives me 12. So if I instead just add a zero to one of the numbers, like if I do two times 60, that is gonna give me 120. All right, same with four and 30, right? If I do four times three, that is going to give me 12. Now, if I put a zero on one of them, like if I do 4 times 30, that is going to give me 120. Okay, so 
that's just kind of a strategy you can use. Think of numbers that will multiply together to give us 120. But the idea is we want something where at least one of the numbers is going to show up on our common square roots list. So 2 and 6 is not going to help us out because they don't show up on our list here. Okay. Actually, what I mean by we don't we don't care about the numbers here to the right of the equal sign. That's not really going to help us out. We want to look at the numbers that are underneath the square roots. Like right here, we see square root of 1, square root of 4, square root of 9. So what we need to do is find two sets of numbers that will multiply together to give us 120. And we're hoping that at least that one of those numbers is going to show up here underneath the square roots on my common square roots list. So we've got 4 and 30 here. And if I look under on my common square roots list here, I see 4 under the square root. Okay, so the square root of 4 is 2. So let me show you where I'm going with this. I want to take my square root of 120. And the idea is that this is going to be equal to the square root of 4 times 30. All right. And the reason, again, because 4 times 30 equals 120, so therefore the square root of 120 must equal the square root of 4 times 30. All right, hopefully you see how I got this so far. Now, we know that the square root of 4 is 2, so I can take this a step further. All right, the square root of 4 is 2, so I can write 2 square root 30, just like that. Now, are there any other steps here? Well, let's think. In order to check that, I need to think about pairs of numbers that will give me 30 if I multiply them together. So just to list some things here, you know, obviously 1 and 30, just off the top of my head here, maybe 2 and 15 will give me 30. Um, also, there's 5 and 6 will multiply together to give me 30. All right, and just off the top of my head, these are pairs of numbers I'm listing. But if I look here at the square roots, I don't see any of these numbers underneath the square roots on my list. So this is going to be the final answer here. There's nothing else to simplify. The correct answer here is D. So let me show you the written solution. This is kind of hard, so if you got this wrong, don't worry about it. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you learned something here. If Karen purchased a shirt on sale for $39.99 in a state where the sales tax is 7%, how much money did Karen pay for the shirt, rounded to the nearest whole number? So now would be a good time to pause the video, give this one a shot, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so for this question, I'm going to start with that $39.99. And my first move is I have to figure out uh, what 7% of 39.99 is. So I'm going to multiply by 0 0.07 here because 7% is equal to uh, 0 0.07 as a decimal. And so the number I get in my calculator here, I get 2.7993. Three, and you could round at this point, but I like to just wait until the final answer and then round. So I have 2.7993. And now I'm going to add this to 39.99. And so if I do that, the answer I get, the value I get in my calculator is about answer choice A. Um, but the instruction is to round to the nearest whole number. So the nearest whole number would be 43. So B is the right answer. If you got A, though, I would still consider the fact, I would still say you got this question right because you got, uh, you, you figured out how to get the answer. It's just that there's a little nuance here because it's asking you how to round to, round to the nearest whole number. So technically B would be the correct answer in this case. But if you got A, I'm happy with that. So here's the written solution. I'll put this up on the screen for you. And when you're ready, I mean, pause the video, take all the time you need, and we'll go on when you're ready. The formula for the area of a regular hexagon is a equals 3 square root of 2 divided by 2 times s squared, where s is the length of each side. Based on this formula, what is the area of the regular hexagon below, which we see here? Is it a, b, c, d, or what about e? Let's have you pause the video, try to figure this out, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so the geometry questions on the GED test, some of them are going to be tricky. Some of them will hopefully be pretty easy if you prepare for them. 
Uh, there's no telling which shapes you're going to get on the test. Uh, it's pretty much randomized here. Um, and so basically, whether or not you get uh, an exact question about a hexagon on the test or not, uh, this is still a really good practice. And basically, all you do here is we just have to see that uh, once all the sides are length 10 here, so you just pick one random side. And you're going to plug that into the formula for S, all right? So we've got 3 square root of 2 divided by 2 times S squared. S squared is 10 squared, which is 100, all right? So you could put this in your calculator, but let me show you the kind of speed run version of this here. 100 divided by 2 is 50. So I've got 3 square root of 2 times 50, if I rewrite it. Now, what is 50 times 3? 50 times 3 is 150, and just like that, we get answer choice A as the correct answer. So let me show you the answer on the screen here. Pause the video, take all the time you need, and when you're ready, we'll go to the next question.